Hello YouTube. If you haven't heard, I recently got the world record in Pokemon Sapphire and today I'll be doing the commentary version on that run. I'm doing this a little bit differently than I normally do where I'll have the new record and the old record side by side and give insight into the differences between the runs, new strategies that were developed since then and so on. So I hope that you enjoy it because I'm excited to do the commentary on this run and with that let's get right into it all right so here we go i am doing this commentary in a bit of a different style than i've done in the past where i'm just recording this offline uh not live on twitch i mean and in addition to that having the runs showcase side by side uh my world record the new one here and wave warriors here so I think it'll be interesting and I'll be more focused on being able to give a full commentary rather than responding to chat questions and stuff. But um, the video started synced up and already um, the lead has shifted back and forth slightly um, and you'll see that continue to happen in this you know, beginning part of the game where there's no actual luck involved, just how well you're mashing and uh, performing various slight optimizations. Um, I watched the first part of this earlier just to get a feel for it and uh, see what was going on. And I believe Wave Warrior winds up with about a 0.5 second lead on me after the intro is finished. So he does it uh, a little better than me. But, you know, trying to save my hands while I'm going through reset after reset. Uh, some context on this run, on my run. Uh, this was pretty late in the day on the stream. And I had had two deaths to the exact same thing. The Metatite in Watson's Gym. I got confusion crit uh, by it twice, which is very unlikely to happen even once. So, you know, I'm kind of maybe going through the motions at this point and not really expecting to get on a banger of a run. So definitely something to think about as we look through this. But um, yeah, you can already see that Wave Warrior has pulled ahead slightly that will surely change um i haven't watched his run super recently so i don't remember exactly where the differences are but i have a general idea just from uh, having run against his splits those are his splits uh, in the world record column under my uh on, on my timer um and if you look at those you can see that our runs really aren't too far apart my old pb and what is now the x world record um you know, five seconds at Duford and two seconds at Flannery, eight seconds at Norman. Um, this game definitely has a lot less variance than Fire Red Round 2 if you are used to watching that where the splits can go all over the place. But what we just did there was Mudkip Manip. So we save the game and then reset. And as long as you have a dry battery, then the game will always start RNG from the same point and then move in a consistent way after saving and resetting. So as long as you can press A on the same exact frame each time, then you'll get the same mudkip. And in this case, we manipulate a naughty mudkip that uh, has really insane stats. I guess we can throw them on screen, maybe. But uh, it's got basically nearly perfect stats. And so you run with the same mudkip every run, which means that you can, you know, only have to know one set of like defensive damage ranges and memorize most of them and stuff rather than having to look at a set of notes for it. Um, and during the fight and what you're seeing now, there's actually uh, an extension of that mudkip manipulation where we time 
a few events, including not missing tackle, uh, the frame that we exit the fight on, and the frame that we exit the lab cutscene on. After we do that, we pay attention to what way the NPCs move in the overworld, and that lets us know which frame that we've landed on. And then using that information, we can take a path that we already know results in no encounters to the first rival fight. Um, that manipulation, it, the extended manipulation ends at, uh, at the Trico fight. It's pretty hard to manipulate past that, though it is technically possible to do. Uh, we see Wave Warrior get a crit on the first fight there. So he's got uh, a little bit of a lead now, like five seconds or something, um, which is great. But the really impactful part of getting a crit on that fight and why it would be so valuable to manipulate it is that you actually wind up with a much better HP for the next fight. Um, you, I'm actually at the lowest HP that you wouldn't heal before the fight for using your only potion before the fight for, which is 11. Um, Wave Warrior wound up, I think, wh what, with uh, 16 or something, 17. And that's a decent, a wide margin safer than 11 HP heading into the next fight. But um, there's a few reasons why you don't want to potion before this fight and why we're risking 11, even though you can die there, is, uh, is worth it. Um, Mostly because your potion count is actually pretty tight in this run, and money overall is tight, um, as we'll see in a in a couple of different places. But the uh, the number of potions that you get for the entire run is four, so you you really like to not use more than one on the rock sand split, which is a big ass sometimes for sure. So you see Wave Warrior get no encounters there, and my run does uh, get one. That's just completely random. Uh, can't realistically be manipulated. But as you'll see, I won't get another one here. One, two, three, four steps of grass that I walked through. Uh, you get four tiles of immunity after fighting a trainer or getting a wild encounter. So there was no chance of me getting an additional encounter there. Um, so your speed tied with this zigzagoon, which is quite annoying, um, because it knows growl and its tackles can start doing a lot of damage after it uses tail up on you a few times, or if it hits a crit after tail whipping or something. Um, ideally you'd like to kill in four turns and I do get that here. That was a really important speed tie win. Because if he had growled again, then I, it wouldn't have killed. So, uh, and we see how you know how much randomness there is in this first split. Like the lead. Okay, well, actually, Wave Warrior got two encounters in that batch. So that's really bad. Um, I was gonna say the lead shifting back and forth, but yeah, that was unlucky. So we see a 755 Mart entry for me, which is pretty good. Anything sub eight is uh, solid. And yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much all the potions we get for the whole run. It's the three we bought there and then the one that we took out of the PC at the beginning of the run. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a new little fun thing. It saves, what, like 32 frames to talk to Norman from the side rather than the bottom. Um, just the way that we see, like, Wally has to walk all the way up to the cutscene or whatever. I don't know what the exact difference is, but yeah, it's faster to talk to him from the side. But that changes your step count, which is really important for the remaining RNG minips in the run, being Wingle and Abra. It doesn't really matter for Kyger, or it's extremely unlikely to matter, rather. Um, so if you take too few or too many steps, you can, um, mess up an RNG minip. It won't work, uh, as intended, which means the run is over if that ever happens. So you need to be aware of how many steps you're taking. Um, 
especially this Wingle Manipa is pretty finicky. But the way it works, uh, I believe, is that the game every so many steps needs to check for like updating your Pokemon's happiness, like every 128 steps or something. And when it does that check, it advances the RNG. So if you've taken a, an inconsistent number of steps, you can get a different result when doing the same RNG manip. So you need to be careful about that. But once you're used to it, it's not uh, it's not too difficult to avoid anything bad happening. Um, so yeah, the important bit about that is that I took two extra steps than Wave Warrior. So there's actually one of the paths that for the swing gold minute that's going to be different if i happen to hit that one and when i say paths um i mean that we're going to do an rng minute here which means save and reset and unlike mudkit minute this is not a one frame minute this is actually it's up to six frames if you are uh, willing to memorize that many paths but i'm going to load it into the game here and then i'm going to look at this npc so that's up he moved up and she moved up too that's path two memorize that and i do that little movement where i walk the last tile wave where it looks like it's path what is that four i think that's four yeah um so he actually ran the full way until he got an encounter if either of us had done the other's movement then it wouldn't have worked um the importance of that is uh, of that NPC tracking and stuff is that it's really difficult to hit one frame in Ips. It's uh, one sixtieth of a second, the timing that you need there. So uh, while it can be, you know, a little mentally taxing, especially if you're first getting into the game to learn and memorize those paths and the slight movement alterations that results in uh, the same outcome, which is that level five wingle. Um, with a specific nature that also gets in the Pokeball without weakening it um, to make sure that isn't just a one frame manip. Uh, yeah, it's important to have it set up that way. And Aber manip will be the same. Um, I had to heal before this fight. You generally heal anything less than 16. And this is one of the worst fights in the run because this Puccina has three moves and one of them sand attack. It's a five shot with tackle, which is quite annoying. And I actually double crit this thing, which is sick. Uh, I get sand attacked and hit through. So this fun fact, I've grinded this game for something like three months, somewhere around there. That is the second three turn fight that I got. A three turn fight requires two crits and not missing. And the other one also happened on this day, which is super fun. But, uh... Yeah, that fight going that well was a huge difference maker. Um, that fight can take, you know, 10 turns <laughs> if you get unlucky. Some runs have gotten very low amounts of encounters or got crits previously or whatever and can handle losing some turns to that fight. Uh, others, not so much. Some, so, yeah, and some, sometimes you just die to that fight. Sometimes he sets up enough howls, you miss enough times, he crits you he did for 20 damage. Definitely one of the more frustrating fights. And another fight that would be good to RNG manipulate if you could. Um, manipping a crit or even just manipping not sand attack on the first turn. Um, extending that wingle manip would be really cool. But doing fight manips in this game is pretty finicky. And finding frames that work that are you know one after the other is really important so um we'll get wave warriors screen here for a second to explain this wingle strat since i was a little late on my screen um we switch to wingle here after leading mudkip mudkip only has mud slap right now and then wingle takes a hit we outspeed and do almost his entire health bar and then die send Mudkip back in. He finishes with Mud Slap, and that is much faster than the alternative of Mudkip just sitting there and Mud Slapping it six times. And then with the XP that we get from that, we actually learn Water Gun to sweep the rest of the gym. So um, since you need to get a Pokemon to learn Fly with anyway, 
uh, utilizing Wingle like this is uh, really impactful. And the only frustrating uh, the only frustrating thing about it is that if your Wingle crits on that turn that you we try to weaken the Geodude down to really low health, then the run is just over because you split the XP. And uh, yeah, definitely lost a lot of good, really good runs to that happening. And then also the Geodude can crit you, which means that you have to do the Mudkip Mud Slap fight anyway. Some runs are good enough to continue even after that happens. Um, they won't be nearly as good as they should have been, but yeah. So we've only had to use one potion so far in my run for Roxanne, which is good. Um, I didn't pay attention to what HP I have. Let's see what we have here. 30. Oh, so we're actually just full HP, right? Because we got that crazy pooch fight. We didn't wind up taking any damage. Wave Warrior actually has to heal his uh, Mudkip to full HP, which is not ideal. You don't really want to be full HP for this fight. It doesn't line up super well for what you're going for, but um, at full HP, the strat is just going to be Water Gunner Return. Uh, Nose Pass Hall almost always Rock Tomb first. So, or like as its first damaging move because it wants to, because you're faster than him. So the AI wants to use Rock Tomb to make you slower. And we got an in interesting little development here where we, so I'm actually going to pause it on, on this. So we get hit. He tackles instead of rock throws. Uh, so we take less damage than we were expecting to. So we wind up at this uh, HP of 19. And then you see I actually went for a growl on the turn that Roxanne was going to heal. Um, this is important because, uh, like I talked about before, you want to save potions. But the the bit that makes the growl worth it is that instead of Rock Throw and Rock Tomb doing 12 to 15, it now does 8 to 10 with 9 being the most likely outcome. So and 10 being uh, only 1 in 16 to occur. So I, by growling once, I've actually bought myself two turns of getting rock throwed and one rock throw will put me into torrent which uh is mudkip's ability that makes water moves do 50 percent more damage if you're low hp uh, unfortunately we didn't get a rock throw right into torrent but that's okay and this right here was a damage range to kill that uh that we missed so now we have to go through one more potion um and we did already have Torrent for level 14, so it definitely would have been better to get the range there. I assume I'm going to Mud Slap here, yes. Uh, water Gun PP is a little bit tight, and you, generally speaking, want as much as you can get. So finishing something with Mud Slap there is uh, worth it. And we wind up with low Torrent, which is a great thing. Um, just want to be in any Torrent for, for this section, but um, we'll see why. And it looks like, yeah, Wave Warrior's Run doesn't have Torrent, so you can see the difference easily. And uh, the fact that I got, uh, it looks like a 12, 13 second lead at Roxanne. So, yeah, that Puccina fight, really, really uh, important to the success of this run. Since we wound up with a decent Roxanne fight. Uh, and good HP for this next uh, next section. So, we need to get some experience here, and so getting an encounter is completely fine, but we can't repel yet because even though we only need one encounter worth of experience, um, the amount of repels we have won't last. Uh, as you can see, we actually pick up a repel here off the ground because we don't have enough money for it because you need the potions you get, and I actually get a second encounter here which is not common at all. This has not happened, but maybe, I don't know, three or four times to me. Um, this is a bit of new movement here. Uh, make that spinner girl look down. Open the menu. That freezes her for 32 frames. And we couple that with the repel from the bag, so like doing two things at once. Freezing the spinner so that we can get past and also using the repel. Um, and she has no chance to 
spin either before opening the menu or after if you do the movement the way that I did it. Wave Warrior did a little bit of a different pass. Um, there's a new way to get past the spinner on the way back that I'll show that I believe Mockwin came up with um, that saves a bunch of repel steps so you can actually make it to the final trainer without having any chance to get an encounter and we didn't uh, have that movement back when Wave Warrior got the strong which was kind of quite a while ago now it was actually an older run than I thought something like two years I think something like that let's see while we're sitting here Um, oh yeah, and the uh, that Puchina only dies in Torrent, and a lot of the wild encounters that you'll try to kill only die in Torrent. So you'll see I got the kill, and then Wave Warriors won't. And then he gets sand attacked, which can be a really, really bad. This run has uh, yeah, it looks like yeah, Wave Warriors run was almost two years ago. But yeah, Wave Warrior winds up hitting through. But because we got the double encounter, we actually lost a uh, well, decent bit of the lead. So this is the new movement here. Run to this tile, walk for three tiles, open the menu. If she had spun down there, then we would have been able to pass. And then we, again, do the little movement, the little doop doop, and then open the menu. It's just a timing thing because spinners spin uh, on cycles. They can only spin every so many frames. So if she hasn't spun by the time that I attempt to uh, open the menu, then that means I can pass safely. You see, Wave Warrior did a, a different pass there where he lines up his repel with the girl. If she hasn't spawned by the time the repel wears off, he can pass. And then he actually had to risk a few tiles of grass um, leading up to this this trainer that we were fighting. I use a mud slap again to save a water gun. Wave Warrior has... He actually got a, quite a good roll on his water gun there. Um, so this will likely kill from here. So him not being in Torrent didn't matter as much as it could have. And the this so this is the the big reason that we get uh, that that little bit of extra experience. Not only because it would be kind of ridiculous to try to fit another repel into the budget because your potion count is already so strained, but. Um, So it, it would be hard to avoid getting an encounter anyway, but uh, it gets you Marsh Stomp one fight early. Um, and that makes a really big difference on the next fight, which is the Meditite Trainer in Brawly's Gym. One of my favorite parts about this run is that this guy gives you two great balls and you use both of them to catch things uh, rather than buying your own balls those great balls actually come in uh, really clutch so what, what is the lead that we have on wave rear here It's like nine seconds right now. So both of these runs, I would say, are a bit above average. I believe I have three potions in Wave Warrior 2. Uh, potion count, really important. You see, money's tight. We sell our Pokeball stack and uh, the Rock Tomb TM to buy what we need for the rest of the run, which is, well, for the rest of the run, <laughs> until our next shop. But uh, two supers, three X speeds, four X attacks, spend almost the uh, entire stack of money there, and you need every, every one of those items. Like, they all have a really specific purpose. So yeah, just one example of money being really tight there. Like you'd like to be able to afford like a potion there on a lot of runs. 
but generally speaking, you uh, you can't. So this is kind of an annoying spinner to dodge because we would normally want to run to force him to look a certain direction and then um, pass him in. I, it would be under him generally, but there's just grass here, right? So the best way to handle the spinner is to just wait for him to to turn and then bag manip him. So opening the bag, freeze him for 32 frames, and then we can uh, get past. You'll see Wave Warrior do the, th uh, do the same thing. There's just another way to get past that guy, unfortunately, without risking encounters. And again, definitely no way. It wouldn't even be worth it to repel, but even if you had the money for it. But yeah, there's no way, so. Just got to do it like that. But you'll see uh, further into the run that there are other ways, uh, faster ways to dodge spinners, especially once we uh, get the bike. So this is something uh, different. You're, you're going to see Wave Warrior go to straight to the cave and the Steven cutscene, and we're going to go straight to Brawley's gym. It doesn't actually matter what order you do these in. Um, so it's more reset efficient to go for Brawly first. And something new that I started doing was keeping, not healing before this fight and keeping Torrent. And the biggest reason that you want to do that is to not waste mud shots. And you need to be in Torrent for Water Gun to two shot this thing. Get the added benefit of Water Gun crit killing since you need to lead Water Gun even if you're not in Torrent because mud shot doesn't kill. Um... The downside is that you have to do the separate menu without anything else, like where you just heal. So that's an extra menu, but it does two things, uh, which is save that mud shot, uh, three things, uh, give you a chance to crit, which is really nice. And then it also guarantees that you'll be full HP for Brawly, which can sometimes be a bad thing, but uh, just generally speaking is the, the safest HP to be at. So the Brawly fight sucks. This is Maybe my least favorite fight of the run, but we get the best possible move on turn one, which is Seismic Toss. Um, he really likes to bulk up there, which makes the fight take an extra turn. And Seismic Toss is also the exact amount of damage that we need to take for the Rival 2 fight. So we'll, we'll, we'll have uh, guaranteed good HP for that fight. So I believe, and see, this is why the Brawly fight gets tricky. You have to look at this HP bar very closely. And I don't remember, and I'm looking at it on a smaller video than normal, so I'm not 100% sure, but um, I believe that this is the exact HP where a non-torrent water gun will actually um, guarantee one hit KO this. There's only one HP value where that's the case, um, where non-torrent water gun... KOs and the but he's one HP out of heal range also and I believe that's the exact pixel where that happens um but I get arm thrust anyway which puts me into torrent which means this is a slam dunk water gun kill but yeah um depending on what happens on the machop you need to use different moves in a different order um, based on exactly how much HP it has. Reading HP bar is really important for that fight. Um, we maybe we'll see an example of uh, that being more important on the Machop and Wave Warriors run. I'm not sure how this fight goes, but... Um, now Wave Warrior is going to come and do what we just did, and we're going to go do what he just did. <laughs> um, Brawly is a fight that is something like one in four to kill you somewhere roundabouts one in four one in five to kill you assuming you know correct decision making and whatnot so getting that out of the way before wasting all the time that way warrior just did uh you know going through the abra minip and such is good for you know real life time save <laughs> doing all that and then just dying means you just wasted all that time for no reason it's not any faster or slower to do um, one or the other. So we're doing a manip similar to Wingle here. 
I'm paying attention to how the hiker moves. He didn't turn, which means I have to do this little turn back movement. Uh, there's a different path if he does move. And uh, that one's like three seconds faster, but there's no way to really hit it consistently since the frames where you get those paths alternate. So it's better to just you know aim for the four frame window where this works. So let's see. Waiver surely gets bulk up, right? Nope. <laughs> All good runs get seismic toss, right? Uh, I believe that's a range if he gets bulk up now, but obviously he doesn't because this run is a world record. He actually gets the same fight as me. That's kind of crazy. Uh, that's not like the most, or it's actually not a common fight at all. Seismic toss into Karate Chop. And then, is that, wait, I believe that is, and call me crazy. I believe that's one HP off water gun, but I could be crazy. Videos are a little different. HP bar looks a little different. Let's see what where it does. Yeah, I was right. So see, I, yeah, even even though I just saw the correct HP, it's kind of like you know it when you see it kind of thing. Even though I just saw it, this difference um, was the difference between whether he water gunned and mud shotted, and that's a really important difference, right? Because you're as we're gonna see, the, your mud shot count is really important, but also water gun can't miss, and mud shot has a five percent chance to miss. So, um. Water gunning instead of mud shotting is like huge value. Definitely want to do that and be aware of that where you can. Oh, something some people might be wondering about is uh, we used to talk to Steven from the side and escape rope out. Um, if you don't walk out of that room, then it's faster to escape rope. But now that we're doing Abramanip, we get some distance into the cave without having to risk an encounter since we're RNG manipulating it. And that means that your repel lasts long enough for you to actually run out of the cave instead. And if you're running out of the cave rather than escape roping, which is very slightly faster... Uh, crazy, I know. I was uh, I was shocked to learn that it was like very slightly faster to just run out than rather than pick up and use the escape rope, which has a pretty slow animation. Um, so yeah, that's why we don't talk to Steven from the side anymore. It's actually slower to do that if you're uh, leaving the room yourself rather than escape roping. Um, so I got the, I had Torrent for Metatite, and then I got a, was it a two Mudshot Brawly? So my Mudshots are looking really good right now. Mudshot count can be a huge problem that spirals out of control. But, uh, we're looking pretty good right now. Um, so I am going to have to heal for Rival 2. My HP is too low right now, but I haven't healed yet because Torrent on Water Gun matters for Zubat here. But let's see how many, uh, okay, so I have six Water Guns here. Um, you, in my opinion, want four after this fight. You want to save four Water Guns. But since we're in Torrent, we can lead Water Gun here. And we actually get a Supersonic Miss. Huge. Uh, this thing has three moves. It uses them randomly. If you get Supersonic there, you're just 50% to lose the run. So nice miss. Um, but yeah, the alternate strategy that you would have to do if you're not in Torrent, I believe, the, uh, does Wave Warrior do it here? Surely. Yeah. He, ta he leads Tackle. Um... Tackle Water Gun is a damage range, so you have to judge the HP that Tackle, the, uh, the damage that Tackle does to decide if you can Water Gun in turn two or not. And Tackle also has a chance to miss, um, same as Mudshot 5%. So by being in Torrent for 
the Zubat, you can just water gun, water gun, if you have enough water guns, which by the way, if you remember earlier in the run, we saved two, one from mud slapping nose pass and one from mud slapping the Machop before evolving to Marsh Stomp. So those two water gun saves actually came in pretty clutch because we didn't have to tackle Zubat there and got to take advantage of the fact that we were in Torrent. Now there is a small chance to die to the Carvanas if you get exactly Mudshot Mess into um, random AI bite because the, those grunts don't have any like kill AI. They just use their moves randomly and they have what uh, Leer, Rage, Bite, and Focus Energy probably. So here, uh, Repel, and we actually needed to pop a potion here. Not super happy about that, but um, that's why having three for Roxanne, um, or after Roxanne, was really important. So that we can use a potion here, and it's not the end of the world. So we're going to uh, we're gonna watch Wave Warrior do the spinner pass. Well, I just did it, but... So he's going to run up to this tile. That's going to make the spinner look left. Um, then he needs to switch to a walk so that the spinner doesn't turn right. And then he's going to open the menu. It's just the way that spinner cycles line up and how and when they can turn. Um, if you, if you do it quickly enough, uh, open the menu that is, and this spinner hasn't spun yet, then you can pass here, um, without having any chance of getting seen. Now you could also open the bag and freeze him for 32 frames but there's no reason to do that here with the way that the cycles line up um so he will just close the menu and then pass here which is the same as i did uh, and then we pick up this full heal pretty important full heal uh, for a number of things like uh, for example this numal could burn you with ember and then your run is over unless you have the full heal ideally that doesn't happen but um, this is, this is known, you know, probably because of a really old Worcester video as, you know, one of the worst fights in Pokemon speedrunning. Uh, you know, it's just the absolute worst. But if you'll notice something that's different about both, both of our runs and that Worcester video is that Worcester enters this fight at full HP. And that is a huge blunder. Uh, and part of the reason, or the whole reason I said that getting Seismic Toss earlier was good. Uh, the way AI works in this game is that certain moves will either be discouraged or impossible if a trainer has AI um, when you're at or under certain HP thresholds. So in this case, um, this Numal has Growl and it will only use Growl if you are at 70% or above of your total HP, of your max HP. So that means that you need to be under 41 uh, here. So 40 or less HP, you will never see Growl from the Snoomal, if, if that's the case. If you do get Growl, then uh, your run's pretty much over. So that is, uh, you know, why we control our HP here. And then we heal up to full, finish with Mud Slap. Uh, it's actually faster to Water Gun here, but I don't have enough Water Guns to safely do that without uh, potentially running out later. And then this, this is one of the cool, coolest strats. I've explained it in other videos, but for those of you who haven't seen or uh, understand why this is such a cool strategy, um, let's go through it. We X attack twice, and then we used one X speed. Uh, finish off the Numal, heal to full and then go into the Scrovile, right? The Scrovile is still faster than us, even after an X speed. So we Mud Shot. The Grovile will always absorb as its most damaging move by far, which is four times super effective to us. Does shit ton of damage. And then our Mud Shot hits after that. Now, okay, well, I crit, so it's less fun, but we'll see it in Weavers. Um Mudshot will lower the Grovile's speed, then we'll be faster, then we KO on turn two. What's important about this that you might not realize is that if we had, for example, set up 2x speeds, and then we were faster on Grovile on the first turn, we would hit him, and then he would absorb, heal all that back, and now what? 
you're screwed. So being slower on the first turn and faster on the second turn of this fight is key to making it work. Now, if you just crit like uh, like me, then you know, I guess it doesn't matter, but um, surely Wave Warrior will show off the strat, right? Mudshot, yep, speed fall. And I do believe that this was enough damage for him to be able to use tackle here. Um, you're like three and 16, I think, to do. Oh, it's probably more than that. It's like five and 16 to do more damage. He gets the crit on turn two, unlucky. Unlucky. We actually wind up at the same exact HP. That's fun. But uh, importantly, we are both in Torrent for this uh, next section, too. It's not the end of the world if you're not, but it's a lot lighter on your mud shots if you can uh, get away with it. This is kind of a... Uh, an interesting spinner. I believe this guy can spin any of his four directions. So there's no good way to pass him without actually fully freezing him with a bagman up. So we'll run to this tile right here, walk to this tile, open the bag, and then actually fully freeze him. Um, he's a different type of spinners than ones that can only look in uh, two or even three directions. And this guy is a rotator, which is different than the spinner. He spins in a set uh, set intervals in a clockwise direction. So we're going to make him look down by running to this tile and then just walk past him. Actually, and you see this. This is actually a nice frame to, um, to pause the video on. We're actually running off the tile, and he instantly looks up. But we're, we're immediately considered off the tile, so we can just uh, start running to save the amount of time that it takes to run to this tile versus walking. And uh, that's really the only way to get past those guys, so Wave Warrior is going to do the same thing. Yep. Pick up Rob, Smash, and the bike. Have my mouse on the video for I guess it was under my camera. Whew, people will freak out if you leave your uh, leave your mouse somewhere. But I actually like having it to where I can like point to stuff, you know. Um, so this section is where the mud shot count starts to kind of come into play. I haven't really kept track of how much uh Mudshot's Wave Warrior is used, but I do know that I have not used enough to where uh, I'm going to use this ether yet. Um, but if you've already if you've already used enough Mudshots to where an ether won't overcap you on Mudshots, then you just do it in that menu. Since you're right there anyway. Um, oh yeah, so this is a tiny optimization, but it's actually like one or maybe two inputs faster to delay this rock smash teach until uh, the next split when you actually have the strength HM in your bag too. So you don't have to go over here twice, but it's a super small thing. But that's why uh, the Watson split is a little different than, uh, or it will be a little different than I have it listed as. So he didn't, uh, he didn't wind up ethering there. Okay. So this Ralts only dies in Torrent, so this is just a water gun traded for or for a mud or a mud shot traded for a water gun. You would have to mud shot that if you weren't in Torrent, which really just depends on how much damage the Grow Battle did to you. And uh, yeah, we're at the exact same HP, so get the same thing. A little faster to run that tile than bike it since uh, the mock bike has some wind up time before it's fast. So this is the guy. This is the guy who killed me twice this day. <laughs> He's got four moves. One of them's confusion and he crit me twice with it. And um, this is again, you can, it actually does very similar damage to the other meta type. It's kind of interesting how this works out. You have to be in torrent to lead... Uh, well, actually, you always leave Water Gun, but you have to be in Torrent to go Water Gun, Water Gun. And you have to be in Torrent for Crit Water Gun to kill. We didn't get that, but it would have been cool, right? We get Confusion again. 
Now, you know what I'm thinking at this moment. I'm thinking this is this is going to be the clip of the century. I'm dead. I'm getting crit three times in a row. Why am I getting confusioned? Um, super annoying stuff like that. However, what I will point out about this confusion is that I'm at 18 HP right now. And at the next level, I'm going to gain three HP. Uh, I'll be 65 max, which puts me at 21, which is a very important value because it tanks Sonic Boom. However, I'm not going to get that level, that next level just yet. It's going to take one more Pokemon for me to get that. So if I didn't get confusion there, I probably, because this run is good, but it's not the best run I've ever had. Um, and there's also some other downsides. I probably would not have potioned here trying to go heal us in this gym, but the confusion forces me to heal for, uh, for Watson. However, <laughs> if I didn't get confusion, I wouldn't have healed, so I would have been at 18 HP here on the Voltorb. Used an X speed, and then I would have been roughly one in four to die. Four moves, and uh, one of them Sonic Boom, and uh, a Sonic Boom has a 10% miss chance, so you're not always dead, but usually. And we don't wind up getting that, but we could, you could say that the confusion saved my life, because there's a different world where I don't heal there, and then I just die, and then I end the stream for the day. Um, the other downside is that if you heal there and then you don't get Sonic Boom, you're in range um, because of that mechanic we talked about earlier with AI and um, certain status moves. We'll be in range to get Super Sonic from Watson's lead Magnetite. Uh, and that is not where you want to use your full heal. So... Wait, if we also get confusion, I mean, he must have, right? Confusion into potion. I'm not going to go back and check, but yeah. Okay, so. X speed. Get Sonic Boom. Five, God, I have five mud shots here. That's crazy. You never, you very rarely have this many. Um, it's very difficult to actually make it through the Watson fight without using that ether that we picked up. Um, we actually picked that up in Petalburg Forest or whatever it's called. Um, and that is going, the fact that we haven't used the ether yet, it's going to let us do a very interesting strat. Uh, Wave Warrior gets the same thing. If you miss Mudshot on Magnetite or Magneton, Balsonic Boom, and then you're dead 90% of the time. Um, so it's important to note that I haven't taught Rock Smash yet, so this lead isn't as uh, as big as it looks by the video. Time for some mock biking. First mock biking of the run. Time to judge myself. Um, this is another spinner pass thing. So when you run to a tile, you force a spinner to look in a direction. But biking doesn't do that. So um, another thing about the mock bike is that you you can't just dismount anytime you want. You it has to de it has to accelerate and it has to decelerate too before you actually come to a stop. So by running into this wall, we can get off the bike instantly and then start our run to this guy um force him to look right get on the bike open the menu which we have to do anyway to repel and then we're going to teach rock smash here and uh this is uh this will be a safe pass no chance to get hit 
And here is where the beginning of the super interesting... Oh, I, <laughs> I tricked myself there. I was like, wait, I didn't pick up the maxi through this run, did I? Okay, so... Because I made a movement mistake, that's funny. Um, so this item right here is a Max Ether. And up until recently, we had always been picking up this Max Ether. However, we're not going to do that this run. We're going to fake like we're going to get it <laughs> and then actually save the move in it. Just barely. Wave Warrior uses his Ether there. And he will be picking up the Max Ether. But we don't need to do that. Um, it's kind of an interesting little detour. Um, this is part of the Abra reroute. This uh, this little detour for the HP up. Um, this is kind of like a huge testament to you know how tight money is in this run. Uh, it looks kind of bad if you like look at that all the things that just happened to, for us to come get this HP up. But it's only like twelve seconds. Uh, including the pickup, but um, there is just no other way to get enough money than pick this up. It sells for uh, forty nine hundred, which is massive. I looked, I looked relentlessly for a way to skip that HP up because it looks so bad. Um, I don't know, it just looks bad for for whatever reason. But it is quite necessary for the route. Hit that tree there. Unlucky. By unlucky, I mean bad. So here you see, I open, I, I taught Rock Smash, and then I open the menu, and my, my cursor's already on Strength. Um, strength has replaced the slot of Rock Smash in, in my inventory, so slightly faster to teach Strength here. So this is yet another different type of way to... Oh, what the... Did I just go up there for no reason? Up the potions. Uh, but it, that, but it's important to note that I have exactly one potion left. Um, so different type of spinner pass here. This is a rotator. Don't need to worry about her. Um, but we go down here. I actually go down too far. I think I believe this is the the line that you need to go to. So I actually went two two tiles too far down here. But what that does is it deloads this guy up here. He is unloaded. Um, and when he becomes loaded, we are already moving at max speed on the mock bike from a number of tiles away that he cannot spin by the time that we pass him. So that's how we get the, the pass from this way. Um, this is also a safe tile. He can't see you from here. Um, the safer and easier way to do this would be to bike all the way here and then dismount and then come back. But I practice this one a lot, so I like doing this one. Then we're going to get off the bike like we showed before. Run. You see how he's forced to look right. And this will be the first, right? Yeah, this will be the first run to bike in the run. So let's uh, go to this, run to bike. And so to explain that, deload, run to a specific tile to make him look right. Stop moving, because you can't get on the bike while you're moving. And then within six frames, input, I believe six frames, input, get on bike and start moving left. And that makes it a safe pass. Can't spin in time. Um, those can be tricky. I don't know if I miss any of this run. I prob probably do, honestly. Um, especially with nerves towards the later half of the run. That Paul barely makes it. And then this guy is, I get this question all the time. Why did you go down here? It's the same exact thing as that hiker from before. We need to deload this guy and then load him, uh, moving max speed on the mock bike and with a number of tiles that we can uh, pass him before he spins. I see Wave Warrior go for the same uh, more difficult pass there. Props. So. This fight used to be the worst fight ever <laughs> on the old route. Uh, on this route, you just X attack and then you win. On this run in particular, um, and I believe Wave Warrior has the same HP as me, so I assume he made the same decision. Um, 
on this run in particular, uh, I actually had a chance to die to getting critical hit here. I really didn't want a potion for two reasons. Number one, it's my last potion and having a single potion for a number of mid to late game scenarios is really, really valuable. You want to save one for sure. The other problem is that if I healed, I would be 35 out of 70, which is uh, exactly half HP, which means that this Wingle would have a chance to use Supersonic. Being under 70% means it can't use its uh, Growl, and being under 50% means he can't use Supersonic. So healing here would have been really bad, um, but I had to risk getting crit there, but now the fight's over. And that's due to having an X attack and having to strength before this fight, which the old route didn't have. Old route had to natty mud shot this Resilia for a uh, oh, something like a 27% chance to die. And then, yeah, Wave Warrior does the same thing here. I don't know how many potions he has. I assume one or zero. Um, but you, you just can't heal there, even though you have to risk the crit. But yeah, having Cool Trainer Brook be a mostly free. On most runs, you have HP where even if you get crit, you live. Um, so it's just a 100% win rate fight on those runs. So we have one potion left. Doing some swag biking. Let's see that little mock bike deceleration there that we were talking about earlier. Wave Warrior has also one potion left. Barely missed the entrance there. All right, so fun fact. This is the last shop that we take for the entire run. Um, old, the, uh, the old route with no Abra would actually take two additional shops, one in Petalburg after Norman and one in, uh, uh, what is it, Moss Deep? Uh, yeah, Moss Deep. So that's uh, a big reason why the HP up is so important. Like, yeah, 15 Super Repels, that's a lot of Super Repels. It's not cheap. 8x specials. Um, 10x attacks. Let's see what Wave Warrior does here. So Wave Warrior does go ahead and buy three super potions. Okay. So there, yeah, that means our buy will be exactly the same. However, we're going to play the next section differently. And this is what I was alluding to, alluding to earlier with the uh, Max Ether. So... Um, normally, and you'll see Wave Warrior do it, you would use healing items to heal to full HP here um, for uh, pre preparing for the Archie fight. Um, now, the problem with that is that you really don't want to use two super potions to do that because that means you could run out of super potions Um in the Archie and Flannery section, which is really bad. So there's a few ways to handle that. You could buy a fourth super potion and instead buy eight X attacks, resulting in, I'll, generally speaking, a less consistent Winona fight, which I hate doing that. I think you should never do that. Um, then the other alternative would be to, uh, which is probably the better one, is to use a super potion and your last potion and then pick up a... Uh, it's a, I don't know, like a five second detour potion later in the run. However, we're not going to do any of that. We're not going to heal at all. Oh, yeah, this was bad. Okay, so <laughs> forgot about this. So this trainer right here, you actually see her spin right before I pause. She can look right here. And how close was this? Because I think she spawns looking... Okay, no, she's down, and then she spins up. But that could have been a right spin. And if it was, then I would have hit her, and we would have lost the run. You need to go one tile right before going down here. So this was actually a pretty large mistake, and I could have lost the run for it. This car bus is also for money. Take one extra step there. Another run to bike there. Same as Same mechanic as before. And then you'll see me take an extra step here. And I think, I, uh, so that was two extra steps. So I'll take one more extra step after the cutscene, And that is to make the repel wear out. You can't repel with a repel active.
um, after Gen 1, actually. So, by taking those three extra bike steps, we'll line up the rappel with the exit of the cave here. And now we can rappel and teleport in the same menu. So, here is the crazy culmination of all of this nonsense. We're actually going to take the Pokemon Center here. Crazy. This is the strat that uh, me and Math Genius cooked up. And it's a pretty specific set of circumstances where this actually winds up being strictly faster. But on this run, it was strictly faster. Um, you need to make it through Watson without using your ether, which is pretty hard to do. We actually had two extra this run. That's very uncommon. You need to save yourself two healing item uses so we didn't have to super or potion there. Um, and ideally, you would also... Oh, actually, Wave Warrior misses his run to bike there. P pretty easy to mess up. We both made uh, what could have been run-ending mistakes on the split, so it's fair. Um, so the two healing item uses, uh, and then ideally uh, you would want to be taking the Pokemon Center when your alternative is using your last potion, because now I don't have to pick up that five second time loss potion. Um, in addition to that, taking the center heals your Wingle because um, it's still dead from when we did the Roxanne strat earlier, which means that when we lead the Wingle on the Archie fight here to um, avoid Intimidate from the Mydiana, uh we won't get super effective text, which saves like uh, 1.4, 1.5 seconds. So you add all that together, skip the Max Aether, skip using the Max Aether, skip using two healing items, um, skip picking up the beach potion and the time save from no super effective text on the Archie fight. And what you wind up with is roughly three or four seconds of pure time save from taking the Pokemon center. But in addition to that, the way that the Pokemon center heals your PP, like the spot that it heals your Mudshot and strength PP in is such that you basically have n no chance of having any issues with running out of PP. Whereas when you have um, the situation that Wave Warrior is in, you will oftentimes either run out before Flannery or you'll put yourself in a situation where it's like, okay, if I miss this mud shot, I'm really screwed because it's my last one, but I can't use the Max Ether yet or I won't have enough Mud Shots for the next section. There's a, a lot of situations where you can get into trouble with Strength and Mud Shot PP, but taking the center completely um, completely removes that. Because remember, I still have the Ether in my bag also, which is necessary to make this work, but yeah. Um, so yeah, lead guard spec, and you see... Uh, Wave Warrior is forced to use Abra instead of Wingle. Minor-ish difference, but no super effective text. And then uh, it's Archie time. So we avoid Intimidate uh, by leading the HM Slave. And then set up, and also set up Guard Spec with that turn so we can't get Sand Attacked, which is what we want to see. We wanted the Sand Attack. And similar to the... Uh, the AI on previous fights, we're actually using it in reverse here. We want to be full HP because we want him to sand attack. So being actually full HP here is really important because um, if you want to pull out your calculator, 53 over 73 is still above 70% HP, which means he's more likely to sand attack than he is to bite. But we just get to bite and to bite, which is no fun. Wave Warrior gets some sand attack action, and okay, let's see this situation. So, we are at 15 HP. We've set up 1x attack and 1x speed, and we're gonna have to heal. So, I think that I actually make a mistake here and just kill it with Mudshot. 
which is because strength was a damage range to kill from here. Yeah. So what I actually should have done is heal on this Mightyena because it does slightly less damage. Uh, 17 to 20 run rather than 20 to 24 from the Golbat. And is guaranteed to use its damaging move. And you'll see what the issue is here. Probably. So we healed a 68. And we're going to be taking three instances of damage from this Golbat. And the problem with that is that it's doing 20 to 24. So I'm dead to 23, 23, 22 from here, which is not incredibly likely, but there wasn't a reason to risk this here. I think I should have healed on the, on the Mighty Anna instead. And you see we wind up at, we, we wind up in an HP that's actually dead to a max roll, only one in 16 to occur, but wind up living on two HP. So yeah, you can see why that, that decision could make a, a big difference. Uh, and I, considering the pace of this run, I probably would have mud shot it anyway, but I actually had to mud shot here rather than strength, even though both kill. And if I miss this mud shot, the run is over because I'm dead. Um, but if I strength, then Sharpedo's rough skin will actually kill me from this HP. So had to mud shot there, which, um, does save the time from rough skin. So is preferable, but is a risk. Um, so we both had to heal in that Archie fight, which means neither of us got like an amazing Archie fight, but um, Yeah, not bad for a uh, 17 second time loss to center. Um, it saves time overall uh, But in the short term, it's a bit slower Another benefit of doing this strat is that you have super potions for this section Um like, if you have as many super potions as you need for Archie and Flannery, even if you get, like, really bad fights. So we're going to super to 54. I heal again, right? Yeah. See, I had the option. I mean, if you got a good Archie fight, you could have two supers there if you didn't center. But it's worth noting that I got a bad Archie fight and was still able to do Flannery at full HP. Wave Warrior heals to... Actually, was that his last super potion? Just for illustrating the point. Yeah. So he wasn't able to heal to full HP here. I, I mean, I wouldn't have used another super potion even if I had one in his position. But... Because you don't need to be, like, actually, actually full HP. But, um... Having all, as many super potions as you need for this can get you out of sticky situations like the really bad fight that I got. I don't know. I say really bad. It wasn't that bad, but it was uh, it was close, and I had to heal. So if you've watched old Sapphire runs, then you'll remember a very, the, that this fight looks very different than it used to. The old strategy was uh, try to get poisoned and then death warp after this fight. So you just sit there stalling on the Slugma forever. But uh, we do a much more streamlined version of the fight now, where you kill the first Slugma and set up on the second because he can light screen, sunny day, flamethrower, getting smog poisoned there is disastrous, so set up on the second one. Um, and then Torkoal is a two-shot, which sucks because it has Attract and Body of Slam Para, but you know, you know, if you were to just critical him, you wouldn't have to worry about any of that. Wow, Wave Warrior gets a giga high roll there. I actually thought that was a crit for a second, too. And, uh... Yeah, and the runs are pretty tight. 15 seconds apart. At this stage. 
Even with the critting the Torkoal. Um, so this is a uh, downside of the no death warp strat. I mean, I say downside. It's all, it's all been compared and timed out. You get a faster, more consistent plenary fight, but you have to go through this go go goggles cutscene where, as when you did the death warp before, you actually got to skip this. But because you have to do this, you can take the medicine shop after Flannery with her uh, money, as well as this uh, this Carbos cell, and then you just basically get infinite healing items for the last run. I did. Sh I did kind of lie earlier when I said it was the last shop in the run. We do do this medicine shop, but that's different, right? Um, yeah, no, every Sapphire run takes the medicine shop here. It's just really efficient uh, money-wise to buy those items. All the healing and uh, status healing you'll need for the rest of the run. We'll take the same path that we took earlier to get to... Um, the tunnel where we got strength, same spinner setup, but uh, now we actually have to bike our way back to Norman's gym. And this is kind of the, um, this is, this section right here that we're doing is kind of what sparked the whole Aber route thing. It was like, okay, well, how are you going to get back to Norman's gym if you don't death warp? Um... And Wave Warrior one day was like, well, what if you just biked there? <laughs> and uh, it turns out it's not as slow as we thought. And Abra saves time in other places. Little run to bike on her. That guy's a rotator after her, the bug catcher guy. Um, this movement's kind of interesting. So right here is the line that the rotator below this spot will be loaded. So... If I were to bonk here, then sh the girl you're about to see down here will be loaded. And if you try to just pass her right away, then you will get seen. And you'll see how close it is here, where sh her next direction is up. Okay, well, I mean, mock bike's really fast, so it doesn't look that close. But if you bonk, then you you will hit her if you don't um, intentionally delay your movement. So. Same thing with this guy. Have to wait for him to spin and then bag manip him. And then right here in this little spot is the beach potion, as it's known as. It's just a potion. Um, we'd get off the bike and pick this up uh, if we hadn't done the center before, but um, we don't need to do that since we uh, preserved our potion by using the Pokemon Center instead. Wavewear does the same thing, and he preserved his potion by taking a... Oh, did he not? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't paying enough attention. I guess he used his... I, I was wondering. Whoa! Wave word. Wait, what was that? That was crazy. Listen, it happens. Sometimes you lose control at the, at the wheel. <laughs> you just... That happens. I do something even worse later, so... But yeah, guess we should talk about this Delicati and how much it sucks. <laughs> this Delicati X accuracies is part of its like room gimmick, and then a lot of times it'll sing. It also has attract. It also has cute charm, which attracts you. This thing can wall you for minutes. Uh, one of my least favorite fights in the run. We got a really lucky one where we didn't lose any turns. So we were actually ops to Mudshot here, so we can talk about this. Um, I don't know. It could have could have been a PP for him uh, thing for him as well. I'm not sure, but um, this what you're about to see stat drop animation, do 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 do, and then the Delicati speed fall. That's like three plus seconds. It's really slow, but it doesn't have a chance to trigger ch uh, cute charm, which uh, gives you the status of attraction, and um. Also, it lets you finish this thing with tackle sometimes, which is a good idea if you're having uh, strength and mudshot PP issues, because, um, like I said, the that max ether route where you don't take the center has it's really tight, uh, making all those mudshots work. So Waver actually does get uh, get hit with the X accuracy thing, 
and now you're just praying for no attract here. He gets growl, nice. But now he can't finish with tackle, which, um, okay, so that is his last mud shot. Oh, uh, okay, so he goes for strength for the guaranteed win there. Has enough to do that. So this Lanoon on my end sets up X defend. You mud shot once to make him slower than you, and then it's actually three strengths from there to kill the guy. Which is a big PP eater. So we finally, uh, I need to menu anyway, and uh, I've used enough mud shots now that I can go ahead and top up with the ether um, and be good for the, the rest of the sections. And I just have like infinite mud shots, basically. Swap super repels down in my inventory to a more favorable position. It'll be closer to the other things that I'm using. And then Wave Warrior gets the god crit on Lanoon. Um, actually, just takes... Wow, he gets crit crit. That's funny. Um, saves two turns. And he already max e third and healed. So he, he doesn't have to menu again now. He can just go. Uh, the Zangoose is a range, and then I crit there, not complaining. Um, if I had missed that range, then he could have slashed. And if that crit, which is 1 in 8 to crit, then uh, it's like, I don't know, 50% to kill you or something. It's a damage range. So, Norman. The single most likely fight to kill you in the game. At roughly 30%, this guy has killed many of my runs. And uh, yeah, you know, equally leveled against a slacking. Um, look, I look at it like this. If you're using an X defend, it's probably a bad fight. <laughs> um, the X defend helps us not get into a heal loop. It's kind of similar to how we growled on Nose Pass earlier to growling once let us live two hits x defend lets us live two of uh facades from the slacking so we don't have to heal every other turn it, it basically it starts accumulating really quickly the number of turns that you save by not having to heal every other turn uh, we get yawn so that might not be as relevant um getting yawn here is actually really 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 bad unless he yawns again because the AI is stupid, and then it's completely fine. Um, so one thing you might notice and be wondering about is why, 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 why do I have 84 HP and Wave Warrior has 83 HP? Also, why am I B and he's A? But that's a different conversation. So the reason for that is that when I killed my wild encounter earlier in the run, um, I killed a Whismer, which gives HP EVs, and he killed something else that doesn't give HP EVs, so you wind up with an extra HP here, which actually matters, because Facade does 35 to 42, with 42 being the 1 in 16 roll, and um, yeah, it's just a lot less likely to get 1 in 16, 1 in 16, than 1 in 16, 1 in 8 damage rolls. Uh have to risk this turn of getting crit by bigger off there it's like pretty much no other way to do it Ooh, i actually open uh inventory and heal powder there haven't gotten a yawn fight in a while so yeah if that was slash was one and eight to crit we would have died if that crit us um something else important about crits is that they uh ignore x defend so if he if the slacking facade crits you on any turn you're just dead even from full hp same with, uh, I mean, the Vigoroth doesn't kill you from full, but he would have killed me from 45 where I was at. We get Facade on this turn. If that crit, it would have killed, obviously. And then another stupid thing is that this slacking is a damage range. We get a giga. Oh, my God, that damage. Look at the first one. And then this this one's just a giga roll. Whew. <laughs> that was so much damage. Oh, must have been popping off for that one. And then that, so that's focus punch. If we miss mud shot here, we lose. 
runs over. But we did not lose this day. And notably, whew, what a what a split. Good Delicati and uh, Quick Norman fight with the Yawn. Yawn. Um, this was my first 58-minute Norman fight of my entire grind. Thus far. So, yeah, notable. 58 Whatever Norman is pretty good. There have been, I believe, sub 5830s. I don't think a 50, uh, 57 has happened, but feel free to correct me. All right. So, we made it past Norman. <laughs> We're feeling good. Feeling like there might be a chance. Also, gold split, 40 seconds ahead of record. We're feeling ourselves right now. Feeling the pressure, heart rate's up. What will occur? Biking to the wrong tile <laughs> will occur. Um, so I'm supposed to bike to the tile above there, not to the tile to the side. I'll get a turn frame after entering the water, which means that I have one additional chance to get an encounter here. It's not likely to get an encounter like per tile in the pond, but uh, I did risk an extra one for no reason. Turn. A little, uh, little turn frame there. Still counts as a chance to get an encounter. Now, this is a section where on the old route, you would have to bike from here back to Mauville. But um, instead, we just get to teleport there with Abra. And slide in that little spot. Saves one tile of surfing for uh, bike tile and so which is faster. Another run to bike here. Run to bike. Um, this is actually uh, one of the more interesting spinner passes, in my opinion. We used to just kind of YOLO this guy, but you bike to this tile, run to this tile, which forces the guy to look up um, like he's already facing because he can only look up and right, and for whatever reason, this tile makes him look up. And uh, then get on the bike and then bag Minute Pen, freeze him for 32 frames um, after after taking the step forward on the bike, too. You have to do that, like, pretty fast to make sure that he can't spin before you open the menu. We'll look at it again. I don't know. I just think that movement looks cool. And then that that is a safe pass, just barely. Run through the grass. And now this section, especially on really good pace, is really scary. Um, the movement is tricky, and there are so many places where if you're off by one tile on the mock bike, you hit a trainer. Uh, that girl right there, you actually have two tiles of leeway with her. Um, or am I crazy? Yeah, no. It's... Yeah, no. You have to, you have to go on this line. She sees you here. Have to go on this line. Um, I guess the safe way to do it would be to go like this, but that's harder. But yeah, oh, that was further back than I meant to go. That's fine. Um, doo -doo -doo. And then that guy right there, if you, yeah, we go on this line. If you're one tile too high, then you hit him. And this guy right here, if you were to go from here up, you would hit him. And then this guy, if you, if you see I'm on this line, if you go on this line right here, you hit this guy. And all of those, obviously, all of those trainers instantly into the in, in the run. It's over. Um, hitting any optional trainer is run over in Sapphire. But some of these trainers are particularly bad um, if you were, you know, for say, per, per chance on a really good run. And so that's why I kind of like overhold right there. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm not intentionally bonking, but I'm making sure that I don't go early, favoring late for early because going early ends your run. Going late, you bonk a couple of times, you look like an idiot. It's okay. We move on. And then I almost so close to nailing the movement there, the rest of it, at least to salvage my situation. Do I actually get the perfect line there too? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the right line here. So I almost did this stupid part perfectly. I hit the last thing on the last tile I possibly could have. So sad. But uh, considering the pace and whatnot, we're going to forgive ourselves. So I'm at has, it's kind of an interesting decision point here. Um, I believe I'll just go look it up while the video plays. Um, you can, if you're in torrent like I am now, you can surf the Carvana and it dies, which means that you have no chance of um, missing Mudshot and getting crunched, which does, I believe, 22 to 27. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that first one does 22 to 27. And this one does, this next Carvana here, does 23 to 28. So if I miss Mudshot, and then he also chooses Crunch, which is one in four, then I will die. So it's a damage range to kill me, favorable to kill me. And so I actually opt to surf this Carvana. So that's interesting that uh, at least in the moment, my thinking was that well, 22 to 27, you know, that's not so bad. But 23 to 28, no, I got to surf this one. Because it's more likely to kill, right? That's a safe pass. If that guy isn't spawned by the time you open the menu, you can pass. Um... But then, <laughs> I kind of realized this is the situation I'm in. I think I surfed this one, too. Yeah. So this Shelly's Carvana is also 22 to 27. Um, and the, the difference between their damage is uh, probably the... Uh, their, it, well, it is their nature. Because it's you might be wondering why the lower level Carvana has a higher, does more damage. It's because it's a difference in their natures. Um, that Mighty Anna could have used Swagger instead of Bite, which uh, leaves you in a situation where you either need to risk your run on a Confusion or heal it off. Happy not to get Bite there, or happy not to get Swagger there. I believe, if I remember correctly, I mean, he must, because I get a good chunk of time save after this split. So yeah, Wave Warrior also, did. He, I don't know if he surfed all of them, but um, he's in the like the same situation as me. Okay, well, now I have to know. I have to know if he surfed all the... Our, I have to know if I'm a little bitch or, you know. So he mud shots that one. He mud shots that one. Was he out of mud shots? No, he wasn't. So he just surfed Shelly's Carvana. Um, I guess the idea with Shelly's Carvana is that uh, scary face becomes extra bad. If it does indeed have scary face, I don't know. How often do you miss those Carvanas enough something happened? It probably has scary face by that point. So then you'd have to worry about the Mighty Anna from there as well. So surfing Shelly's Carvana is a bit better than the others. He wasn't uh, as worried about the death, but it had. I mean, this is my best pace ever, right? This is the best Sapphire run I've ever been on at this point. <laughs> so losing uh, a bit of time to the not very effective text boxes. Uh, and in favor of peace of mind is what I went with. And so let's see. Uh, we're going to take the bed here. Wait, where it does get swagger. This <laughs> lives on 1 HP. I believe it's actually 1 HP. Uh, torrent max roll is, I believe, leaves us money in on 1 HP. Kind of sad. But, I mean, obviously, if you crit, it dies, but... And then, yeah, he had to heal off the confusion there and was dead to crit. I was also dead to crit just without the healing the confusion. So that was the big difference between our splits. And uh, this rebel fight is a lot more chill than the other one. I say <laughs> until we get magnitude 10 from Numel. 150 power move. It's also kind of interesting that you do the same fight here where you uh, 2x attack, 1x speed, and sweep. 
but uh, the Grovile actually just dies in one hit, and you outspeed at this point. So, um, and it's guaranteed to die to strength. But yeah, if that magnitude uh, 10 hit crit, we we would have had problems. The takedown missing, actually probably a bad thing. Just depends. Just depends on, on what happens from here. But yeah, we get uh, <laughs> 55 seconds ahead of world record at this point. Now it's like, oh shit. We might have a little something on our hands here. Walk in the center here to set our teleport waypoint to Fortree. Wave Warrior actually takes more damage. Um, so yeah, definitely feeling some pressure at this point, which could be why the following thing occurs. So we have another run to bike here. We need to dismount the bike though. Um, and the way I choose to do that is running into this guy. You can also run to this wall and then double back and run and run to bike him, but, uh, I found myself more prone to going one extra down here and messing it up. So I do it like this where you go, doo -doo. however, I mess it up and I bike one tile too far left. Or rather, uh, yeah, I bike one tile too far left. And you see, I, I, I can't frame count it. It's annoying. But like I barely miss this down input. Um, I mean, I know it had to be really close, but... I go one tile too far left here, which means that this guy, I believe, was one in eight to kill the run by turning and killing and seeing me here. Um, there's a trainer in this tree. Have to go one down here or she'll see you. That's a, per a tile perfect thing. Yeah, man, that was close. Or I say tile perfect. It's a line perfect thing. So, like, you know, you have to be on this line to because if you're one too far down you hit this tree and if you're one too high you hit the trainer so yeah you have to be on this exact line to pass here weird bonk there overall not terrible other than the fact that you know i risked one at eight to kill the run With a mistake I've never made before. I don't think I've ever made that mistake in that exact way. That's kind of an interesting run to bike. You get off the bike taking these person berries for later, and then you run all the way and then do the run to bike. The Because of the way she's positioned... There's just not a great way to dismount the bike and then like start running because of the whole deceleration thing. She's in the in the way, so you just uh, you just run the whole thing. I think that's the simplest and most consistent way to do it. And also, it's worth noting that that's the last run to bike in the run, so you like really don't want to mess that one up. So going for like a consistent setup there, it might just be the fastest way to do it. I don't know. Never really thought about it, but it's definitely the most intuitive way to go about that. So I'm going to get on and off the bike here. It's like an audio lag transition thing. Something, something if the game is trying to load an audio track. It increases the amount of time between the transition or something. Anyway, getting on and off the bike to change the track to the... Oh, weird. Weird mistake there. Again. Um, getting on and off the bike to change the timing of the audio track loading reduces the amount of time between screen transitions. 
in certain locations and with certain setups. So yeah. Wave Warrior with a weird mistake. So this Zubat is actually 15 out of 16 to die to surf. Kind of crazy. Um, and we have a Mystic Water that we could equip to it, but we'd have to do a separate menu to do that, which isn't quite worth it. But uh, maybe if you're on best pace ever like I was, you could consider having uh, equipped the Mystic Water early. So this is <laughs> some foreshadowing, I guess. But uh, this Puchiena doesn't die to strength, or rather it's a damage range. I think it's like 7 and 16 to die to strength. So you have to choose between Surf and Mudshot to kill it. Um, my thinking by Mudshotting this here is that this run is good enough that some bullshit can happen and we can still record. And um, some of the bullshit slow things that can happen result in you losing Surf PP. So I Mudshot this even though it has a chance to miss and I could use Surf to kill it. To preserve surf pp in the event that bullshit were to occur and uh the downside to that is that you can miss and then get sand attack or whatever um yeah wave warrior in torrent so he doesn't have to risk the damage range there And then, you know, at this point in the run, you don't want to miss a mud shot and get scary faced or something. So this stupid little double Carvana fight, you know. Feel your heart pounding. Please don't miss. It's like, uh, I don't know, something you wouldn't think would be a challenging or important fight. But we actually see a wave where mud shot the Puchina as well. Save that surf PP. And I'm fairly sure that, uh, considering Wave Warrior's HP, that we're going to see him do something different than what I did, which was Mudshot, Mudshot to avoid rough skin text. I believe what Wave Warrior is going to do is actually Strength, Strength instead to intentionally take the rough skin damage. Yeah. Um, to intentionally take the rough skin damage so that once he evolves to Swampert, which we're doing with her candies on my screen, and which he is about to do. Um, he'll still be in Torrent at that point, which is really, really valuable and why taking a lot of damage from that Numal was really nice. The Numal does such a wide range of damage and you need to also heal your um, PP at that point. Taking the bed to heal to full HP is just by far the best strat. But, uh, I mean, yeah, if you could choose, then you would definitely wind up in Torrent like... Like he is now. I'm gonna equip the Mystic Water there, teleport back to Fort Tree. This is another big difference with the old route, the uh, Aberlis, is that you can go do that section, get the XP, get the candy, use it all, and then be Swampert for this section. The uh, the old route was Marsh Tomp for Winona, actually, which was just horrendous. Uh, so this guy just, uh, so yeah, I'm at 79, I don't want to 70, I'm pretty far from Torrent. Not worth taking the rough skins intentionally if you're not getting Torrent out of it. You see Wave Warrior in exact Torrent, 42 out of 127, Torrent is one third or less of your max HP, so 42 times 3, 126 out of 127 is Torrent. And the Swablu is a 7 and 16 damage range with Surf. We actually get it, which is great. 
Um, it has Fury Attack, which is slow, and it also has Sing, which is very slow. So their moves are Mist and fucking Wing Attack or Peck or something. Something that's not bad. You would think this guy would see you, right? Like, you'd think this guy would see you. Like, they would set it up to work, but no. He just is blind. And now Wave Warrior is going to go into the Swablu fight, and uh, he's in Torrent, so his Surf will kill guaranteed instead of having to go for the 7 and 16 range. Now, Winona time. Like we talked about before, we're like exactly one fight ahead here. That's kind of funny. Um, like we talked about before, uh, being at high HP means that it's more likely to use its status altering moves. So, um, we're pretty likely to see double team here. And because we're not in torrent, we also have to set up an X special or it won't die. And we get another double team, which is the most likely outcome. So with one double team, 75% to hit through. With two double teams, 60% to hit through. We miss. It double teams again. Also likely, but not happy to see it. We are now 50% to hit. And it double teams again. Now we're at the point where I no longer have the values memorized for what the chance to hit through is. Because you never want to see this, you know? Once you memorize that, you're accepting that, that it could happen to you someday. And you don't well, you don't want to accept that reality. That would be crazy. So, but that is our reality. It has now set up the, I believe, fifth double team. And thank goodness. Thank goodness we hit through. So, and we crit for extra salt in the wound. Um, this is horrible. And, uh... The reason for that is because we wasted so many surfs into, the, into this thing. You're uh, you're pretty tight on surf PP, depending on what happens. Tate and Liza can go a bunch of different ways. Um, you have some extras, but not a lot. And we just wasted four or something. So now pellet per time. We're at an HP where it is most likely by far to use protect. But because we are above 50% of our max HP, it can use supersonic, but it's not likely um, compared to protect. You need to set up three X attacks here. And this, this, this is fucked up. <laughs> it's supersonics on the last turn of setup so now we have to heal it and as you can see wave warrior over here just presses x speed and then kills the guy because he's in torrent how much time save was that already <laughs> we have to heal off the supersonic then we attack in now he protects of course i mean he was most likely to do that he gets the double protect on us. And Wave Warrior gets no protect at all. We surf the Skarmory. This is a 12 and 16 range. Miss. Sand attack. Wave Warrior also with the 12 and 16 range. Torrent and X Special are the same in this case. He misses it as well. Actually, I don't know. I was about to complain even more, but my man also missed the Skarmory range. Some some amount of fairness. Um, but he gets aerial really on Sand Attack because he was much lower HP. We Surf. We hit. We strength. Uh, plus three strength on Altaria is also 12 and 16 to kill, interestingly enough. We miss. It earthquakes. Uh, Dragon Dance is more likely there, but. Um, oh, yeah. So Wave Warrior is in an interesting spot now. Lower HP than your uh, 
expecting to be for this section. And he actually makes a really intelligent play here. Um, he does not need to heal here, though technically he does risk losing the run if he misses the 12 and 16 range. But I don't think that's why this is a good play. The problem with Wave Warrior's health right now is that he does have a potion to heal, but it's he, he can't heal to a safe HP without healing too much for Tate and Liza, potentially. So what he does instead is he super potions on the Altaria itself. It's guaranteed to use a damaging move here since he's the AI sees him dead to it. And then this sets up his HP beautifully. Um, and for very minorly more time loss than potioning outside of battle. So yeah, this was a, this was a really smart decision by him. And you actually, I believe he sits there for a second and like thinks about it. He's like, oh, is this right? Yeah, this is right. <laughs> Sometimes you want to take that extra beat to make sure you're making the right play. But uh, yeah, my HP is actually kind of sketchy right now for Tate and Liza. There's still uh, another place, or technically more than one place to take damage from here, but currently a little sketchy. So, <laughs> we... We lost our lead, to say the least. That was, like, the worst Winona fight that I didn't die to, I think. that I've, Or that I even that I've ever personally seen. That was just so bad in every single way. Made it to five double teams. Supersonic on the last turn. Double protect. Miss the Scarberry Rain. Scan sand attack. Miss on Altaria. Um, yeah, really, uh, really sad occurrence there. And... Uh, what I know heading into this is that Wave Warrior gets a disgustingly good Tate and Liza, which means that we're expected to lose time there. And remember I talked about Surf Count. Um, I lost a Surf to missing the Skarmory range as well. So I lost an additional Surf. My Surfs are in shambles. I'm like, I'm th I, honestly, to be quite honest, I'm thinking this run is probably fucked at this point after that Winona fight just because of the massive time loss and the surf count together. I mean, you see, we're neck and neck now. We had such a lead. What happened? Well, I mean, we know what happened, but. So I'm curious if Wave Warrior does this movie because I found watching, uh, I think it was Truly, that. Oh, that you can actually hop this ledge. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Because you have to come from here anyway. Huh. No, just kidding. I ignore everything I was about to say. Anyway, I did the movement right. Well, anyway, just to <laughs> illustrate what I was going to say. You can actually hop this ledge from this tile right here. And uh, that could be easier. Maybe. I don't know. I actually like the way that I do it looking at it now. Doesn't matter. Um, you can get encounters here in this little surf section wave warriors doing that I just did, but again, not that likely to get an encounter there. Not worth it to repel just for that. You can't get encounters once you're inside. Interestingly, <laughs> None of these, all, or rather, all of these trainers are avoidable. Um, and I guess this is as good of a place as any to mention this mechanic. So, after I enter the room, I will be in a stationary position. I'll be not in movement. And the way that turning works in this game is that once you're in movement, you can turn as much as you want without losing time. But... If you're standing still and you move in a direction that you're not already facing, then you lose eight frames to the turn frame animation. So the trainers in this hideout are so blind that we actually walk one step towards this girl down to save eight frames. And she still doesn't see us. Like, what is what is she doing? <laughs> that's my uh, that's, I don't know, that's my favorite one. And we actually see, oh, that's another good example here. Um, so I, I spawn in looking down here, right? And you'll actually see me bonk into this structure 
on purpose just to exit the stationary position and then begin movement um, saves between zero and seven frames or whatever um, if you execute it well. There's another, another quirk that probably should have been mentioned over an hour ago, but, you know. You do it in a number of places. Okay, last mud shots in the run time. Um, and time for some annoyances in the Sapphire run. Because you're, the exact value that your HP is heading into the next section is so important for multiple reasons. But this Sharpedo outspeeds you. And it could hit you. It could use Crunch. Or it could use something like Focus Energy. And so it's very difficult to plan for this. And this is why... Wave Warrior's play earlier was very was very intelligent because now he's he's a, at a good HP for Tate and Liza if he doesn't take damage from this Sharpedo, but he also survives if he does get hit by the Sharpedo. And we get the Crunch to the face. Unfortunately. Which is would often be a problem. Wave Warrior gets the very timely focus energy. Um, we do appreciate getting put into Torrent. This is a 14 and 16 range outside of Torrent. Um, guaranteed in Torrent, I guess. But uh, that's the least of our worries right now. So this is the level, level 38, that we will enter Tate and Liza's gym at. Both uh, the minion, Zatu, and the Tate and Liza fight itself. So um, on a, like, um good run on really <laughs> pretty much any run I would potion in this spot right here I would uh, I'm, I'm all the way up at the top of my menu my potions are like one or two above this uh, depending on if I still have my full heal or not and yeah I would potion here but we are in dire straits. It doesn't look so bad since we're nine seconds ahead of record right now, blah, blah, blah. His his end game is too good for us to be able to heal, heal here, I think. Um, we need to look for all the time saves we can. But the other problem that we have is our surf count. The Zatu is a range to die to... Oh, I messed up the repel there. I'm lucky supposed to run out in front of the house so you don't get the bike acceleration there or uh yeah like have to accelerate the bike again wave warrior probably gets it yeah he, oh he bonks the sign but he still gets it um yeah the zatu is a range with surf plus strength but i cannot i absolutely cannot use two surfs on zatu here or uh, like i already as it stands have like one surf for Tate and Liza or something stupid like that. Maybe I too if I finagle it, but I'm pretty sure I finagle it anyway. Um, I think I have what would be six surfs right now, right? So here's the problem. Zatu is level 37. It has three moves. Future Sight and Wish, which are fine. And Nightshade, <laughs> which does 37 damage. So the ideal HP to be for this is between 38 and uh, what is Lunatone's damage? 56. I think between 38 and 56. As we can see, Wave Warrior is squarely inside of that HP, and we are not. But we don't have a choice here. I just have to YOLO. And the Zatu outspeeds you, so it gets two chances to hit a 1 in 3 chance on you. It's just random AI. The other benefit of being in Torrent for this, and also another deciding factor, is it's actually 1 in 16 to die to Torrent Surf. Um, you, don't, you have a chance to kill it without critting, in addition to the crit chance. But I needed to make sure that I could Strength here, and I really just didn't have time to heal. So we actually get away with this one. Uh, I definitely stand by this play in this spot for sure. Uh, there was just, yeah. I mean, I could have also just like risked the damage range, I guess, but yeah. I 
ascertained that healing was probably a bad idea. Uh, the wave warrior winds up getting one nightshade there. Yeah, one nightshade there. And then he actually, yeah, so he risks the second turn here. Um, you really can't heal in his spot here because then you're you're just heal looped. Even if you get nightshaded, you're in the same position on the next turn. Um, and healing to 58 is we're fine HP, but not great. Not what you want to be doing. Um, so we teach dive here, fully transitioning to HM Slave. We are strength, dive, rock, smash, surf, full HMs. <laughs> Always kind of love that about this run, that you actually transition your main into a full HMs. And super appall there, that's a setup for later. So, probably the... I don't know. I don't know if this is the second worst fight. It probably is. At least this fight's kind of fun. Unlike Brawly. I definitely hate Brawly more than this fight. Okay, so first thing we do is accidentally change the video size. First thing we do is press start. That shows us our exact HP value and just the H instead of just the HP bar in this fight, which is important because you need to know exactly what your health is to make appropriate decisions. We X speed Swampert and use Wingle's turn to heal Swampert. So you might be wondering, okay, well, why did you heal in the fight? So just like before in the run, your exact HP heading into this fight, or rather which HP thresholds you're at are very important. In this case, soul in a double battle, the only, uh, only double battle in this run, the Lunatone and Soul Rock have kill AI, but they choose their target randomly. So Soul Rock has a 50% chance to target Swampert and a 50% chance to target Wingle. And then it runs its AI from there. Additionally, the Lunatone and Soul Rock are speed tied with one another. So which one of them moves first is also a 50-50. The important bit, the most important bit anyway, about this is that if Lunatone targets Swampert, we need Lunatone to think that it can kill. Because if it doesn't think that it can kill, then it either uses Hypnosis, which is fine, because then you can use your um, slot 2 Pokemon to heal it off, which is fine. It can use Calm Mind, which is generally very bad and a hard situation to get yourself out of, um, both reducing the damage it takes from Surf and increasing the damage it deals with Psychic up to, like, 95 or something. And then its final move, Light Screen, which is pretty much instantly run over. It's pretty much unsalvageable, especially when you don't have a lead. Um, so... Our first turn, we X speed, and then uh, with Wingle's turn, we need to Hyper Potion Swampert because um, a Super Potion isn't enough since we're actually in kill range for Soul Rock and Lunatone. So if they both target Swampert, we'll die if we Super Potion. Um, yeah, that was a lot of analysis for, <laughs> you know, X speed plus heal. But, you know, hopefully you understand better what we're looking at here. Um, so we get Lunatone hits Swampert for Psychic. It was guaranteed to do that if it targeted the slot because it saw kill. Um, and then Soul Rock Flamethrower. We already know that that's on Wingle because it wouldn't have used Flamethrower if it was on Swampert. Would have been Psychic because Flamethrower doesn't kill Swampert. Um, Wave Warrior has the same turn one as us. He's even lower HP, but effectively the same HP. Um, there's no difference between 9 and 36 in this case. Other than that, I guess it could get... Um, he could get Flamethrower from Sol Rock or something because it would see a kill, maybe. Not a big difference, but yeah. So, um, this is another decision point. Which Pokemon do you send in here? That depends on who's moved first or not. If Lunatone had moved first, but Sol Rock hadn't moved yet, and this Wingle died, then I might send in Cast from here, but um, I'm going to send in Abra in this case. In Wave Warrior's case, he gets... Soul Rock moves first and kills, so he sends in his Abra as well.
Um, and then this was actually a, a pretty big turn. Lunatone targets the the second slot. If if Lunatone had targeted Swampert here, there was a very good chance that we got one of those bad moves we were talking about because I'm not dead to Psychic at 77. It does 56 to 66. So very fortunate turn there. And then yeah, we are, we're actually getting a, a fairly similar fight here. I already got this surf in, but... Um, I, uh, so yeah, I, I got, it was what? Yeah, die to Lunatone. Remember, they're speed tie with each other, so that was a 50-50. And now it's Solrock's turn, and Solrock also targeted this slot with Psychic. This is, Castform has random stats, but generally speaking, it's likely to tank a Psychic, but this was a very important turn for it to do so. Um, so we go for Dive Rain Dance. Sometimes you can get a good damage roll on the Soul Rock and then go for Surf Surf instead of Dive. Uh, but in this case, we got a pretty bad Surf roll, so we couldn't do that. Additionally, if you remember, our Surf count is really bad. Um, Lunatone targets uh, this slot again. Lucky. Um... Soul Rock was also targeting Lot Slot. It would have used Solar Beam if it uh, targeted the Swampert Slot, but it didn't really matter. And we come up. And get a pretty lucky outcome, which is not one of the bad moves. We got Psychic without being in kill range to it, which is, I mean, it honestly pretty much saved the run here because... It gets the special default, doesn't matter. Because now we're in Torrent, first of all. Um, but if we look at my Surf Count, I believe it's four. Oh, I can't look at it right now. It's four. Um, I need four Surfs <laughs> for the next section. So, but I couldn't risk leaving this Lunatone alive if it had a chance to light screen. I would have to Surf and figure out something else, lose a turn or you know, use an extra heal or something later to make up for this surf. But I actually get to dive now because it's guaranteed to Psychic on this turn since I'm dead to it. And yes, dive is slower than surf in this case, but I absolutely needed this surf. And this was, uh, I don't know, something that you, I don't think I've ever had to do in any run where my surf count was such that I have exactly enough to finish the next section with. And diving this Lunatone, even though it was slower, was the correct play. And uh, callback to when we used Mudshot instead of Surf to kill Puchiana on Mount Pyre earlier, that wound up mattering here. That wound up mattering. Like I, I, There was just no other way to salvage this. I would have had to, you know, take a Pokemon Center or something. And then, you know, I know I was kind of talking about Wave Warrior's fight, but... Um, in case you missed it, Wave Warrior gets the good roll on Soul Rock, so he gets to go for Surf, or maybe it's it's raining already, so he gets to go for Surf. Yeah, that's what happened. It was raining. He got his Rain Dance up. But this is a shitty damage range on Lunatone from here, even with um, even with Rain Boosted Surf. He crits Lunatone, and uh, Soul Rock's just dead because it's raining. So yeah, that's why, even though we got a very solid Tate and Liza fight, we lose... Um, you know, good chunk of time here. Yeah, see, that was even better than my PB, even with the with the dive. So, now we're behind. <laughs> and we got to make up some time somehow. But Wave Warrior's endgame is pretty darn good. So, good luck us. Oh, he messes up his repel, it looks like. That's okay. We do something even more stupid on the split, so... Oh, he doesn't... Okay, this was before we had the Repel set up. I see. So it doesn't matter. Cool, cool.
<laughs> it's so close now. So he gets off the bike here to push this boulder. I, don't, I really don't know what the setup here is. It might be faster to do it this way when you don't have the repel set up. But this, this is actually my favorite repel in the whole run. Is this. So this guy is like notoriously annoying to try to pass. Um, he can look any direction and you know, it's just tight quarters. So you repel here. And or have have your repel run out here by setting up that repel at Satan Liza, and then you react to which way he is. If he is facing either left or down, I would turn up here and then menu. But since he's not, I can just menu right away. Um, repel again to bag manip him. I also have to heal because I'm too low. Um, repel again to manip him. Get off the bike for audio lag transition thing. Um. And then it's just faster to run to move all these boulders since you have to do the slow bike acceleration tile every time you want to push one of these. So please note how Wave Warrior does this. So that's uh, 55, 35. So left, up, up, right, right. Okay. 55, 35. Is that what I said? Jesus. So he does this in 54 and a half seconds, basically. So I'm at 126 exactly. So I fuck this up. <laughs> I go one too many up here. And then I'm like, how do I fix this? <laughs> Quick brain. Come on. You can do it. Come on. So we lost, uh, what, five seconds here, basically, to that ADSC. However, proud of myself for uh, in the pressure, under the under the pressure in the moment for <laughs> for fixing it <laughs> and then wave wave where it didn't uh didn't have to heal yet or no he did have to heal okay his repels are at different timings um uh, we get taunt here very happy about that could have gotten crunch and then i would have been in a terrible spot Double taunts. Super cool. Had a run much faster than this that died to some crunched special defense fall into crit shenanigans, and it's, you know, can just do that. Taunt, taunt instead. Uh, the Smitey in it is, what, like 40% to die or something at level 39? Miss the range, get scary face into swagger. Very, 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 very bad. In fact, I'm thinking at this moment that uh, if I don't hit through here, this is not going to be a world record. It's like effectively impossible to record from here, I would say, if I hurt myself because I'll have to heal on top of the hurt self turn, even though the hurt self turn is already bad enough. But yeah, I hit through, so... Nice. And uh, much more confident with this boulder puzzle than the other one, even though it's so simple. Something about this one just feels right. So this can definitely be one of the sillier fights. This Mighty Anna loves to scary face. And uh, Wave Warrior actually... So Wave Warrior was in the opposite position to me. He actually wanted to take damage from that Sharpedo and didn't. Um, 
I didn't want, want to take damage and didn't, so I guess it wasn't the opposite. But anyway, he wanted to take damage and didn't. This thing loves to scary face as long as you're not dead to its takedown, which does 36 damage max. So you guard spec to avoid the scary face first turn. And then you need to set up two X specials. He gets a takedown. Wow, that was pretty lucky, actually. That was, <laughs> that was very lucky <laughs> to get takedown on that turn. Wow. Very much. I don't know what the exact numbers are. It's probably like. It's at least 75%, I would say, from experience to scary face there. It might even be more than that. Um, but yeah, you'll see that it's like super important. And that he does a slightly different strat to me. I um, I set up my X speed on the Mightyena because I don't want to take damage. He sets up his X speed on the Crobat because he does want to take damage. He needs to get into Torrent. And the thing about the X speed is that the Crobat's still faster than you. So you actually take two hits of damage there. And then he gets hit into, tor into Torrent here. Um, which you need to kill both the Crobat and the Sharpedo. Um, so yeah, I just let him hit me once instead. And get get the same Torrent. And this is why you absolutely need three surfaces for, for um the previous Mightyena before this fight, and then this fight. You, I mean, you, you could make it work with the Mightyena. You wouldn't. You would miss that chance of one shotting it, um, and you would have to do like some stupid dive slow shenanigans. But yeah, um, the three surfs on this fighter are, are non-negotiable. Yeah, we wind up losing, uh, you know, about six, seven seconds there. So most of this time loss was my fault. Um, due to messing up that puzzle, losing five seconds there. Pretty sad mistake, but so now <laughs> this is the point where we start talking about Kyogre Manip, because nothing really happens between here and there. So, Kyogre Manip is, in my opinion, the hardest Manip, uh, Gen 1 through 3. Accounting for all factors, all things considered, Kyogre Manip is the most brutal. Um, Kyogre Manip is a 4-frame window at 60 FPS, so a 1 15th of a second window to hit a... Kyogre that has runnable stats, stats that you'll be able to cleanly finish the run with. Not so bad, right? Um, however, we are catching Kyogre in, at full HP in a Great Ball, and that is only a three-frame window. Also, not that crazy. Here's where the problem occurs. This is actually something I probably should have mentioned earlier when talking about RNG minips, but RNG moves twice as fast in battle as it does outside of battle. So what that means is that if you hit the first of the four Kyogres, then you'll have you'll spend three less frames. As opposed to hitting the latest possible Kyogre, you'll spend three less frames in the battle. Or rather, wait, yeah. You'll spend three more frames in the battle and three less frames in the overworld. The important bit is that it ch the, the number of frames that you're spending outside of the battle and inside of the battle change because you're hitting a different Kyogre frame, one of the different four. So what that means is that while the while the catch is a three frame window, that three frame window is like a slider. It's moving based on which Kyogre you hit, but you don't know which Kyogre hit. You can guess which Kyogre you hit by doing this manip hundreds of times until you get a feel for like, okay, I think that one was pretty late or uh, well, there's no way that that was, you know, X or Y. But that, that's what makes this Manip such kind of a head fuck and something that's really difficult is that 
you know, unless you are capable of hitting the same exact Kyogre every single time, which is a one frame window, which is impossible for humans to do. Your catch window is more like two frames because you're kind of estimating which one you hit. Um, and just all of those factors combined with how hard it is to get to this point in the run. So many things that can kill you in this run. And knowing that you're kind of home free as far as like actually dying after this. There's so much pressure on this on this one minute. Um, there are Kyogres that are better than others. There's a worst one. There's a best one. Um, the best one is... In most situations, the mild Kyogre, it doesn't have any damage ranges at all. Um, there's nothing really to worry about with the mild Kyogre. However, there's a plus speed hasty Kyogre, um, one frame prior to the mild. And that Kyogre actually allows you to save some time um, outspeeding stuff and doing a few different strats than you would normally do otherwise. So, um, but it has the worst damage ranges of all of the Kyogre. Still not bad, but the worst of all of them. So, in this case, I was actually aiming for the hasty Kyogre, which is probably where you should be aiming anyway, just like for Kyogre Minip in general. But I was like really trying to get the hasty one since I needed to find time save somewhere because records in game is like not bad at all. It's good even. Um, but it turns out that, I mean, you know, obviously we both hit Kyogre Minip, right? Um, these are both world record runs. You, if you miss Kyogre Minip, then you lose, I believe it's 44, 45 seconds. So it's not an option. You have to hit it first try. <laughs> I actually am freaking out here. So, um, you want to, you want to be mashing... Uh, wait, where is it? Yeah, okay, it's right there. So you want to be mashing B here um, to not get this page two of the Pokedex, I'm, but I'm mashing A because I've been like nervous or something. I, I want to make sure that I nickname it. If you don't nickname Kyogre, you lose like 20 seconds or something to its name printing so much. Um, and so you actually don't know what Kyogre you hit still until you teach Shockwave here. And then you see its HP that indicates to you which one you hit. So uh, Waver and I both hit the best Kyogre, the uh, the mild one. With the other three Kyogres, you actually need to keep Hydro Pump for Wallace's uh, Wish Cash and, and, and when it amnesias. Um, but this Kyogre is so good that it's actually more likely to kill Wish Cash with Surf than... Hydro Pump is to hit. I know I said there was no damage range with the mild. Technically, if the Wish Cash, uh, if the Wish Cash amnesias, then it's uh, like 15 and 16 to kill, 14 and 16 to kill, something like that. So we got to take off the Mystic Water, and uh, we put a Persian Barrier on Kyger. That's why we picked up the Persian Barriers earlier. So this, I'm going to see if I can get the frame. I went and look, it's not perfect, but I went and like looked at this on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I pressed select like actually one frame early here and failed to get on the bike. And I'm like so nervous and I'm reading chat. I don't even realize that I'm not on the bike here. And then I fuck up and I hit the sign and we're just all, we're just, you know, I don't know, man. Hitting Kyogre Minip on pace and... I guess I'm just losing it a little bit, even though I'm really not that nervous right now, because I actually don't think that this run has a very good chance to world record at this point. It's just not reasonable to make up 12 seconds from here on world record. So, yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's it's like extra annoying to like make a mistake like that. I mean, yeah, like my heart rate is a little pumped up, but not like crazy. And I'm not feeling particularly nervous at this point. But uh, yeah, fully main swap to Kyogre. At this point. And the hasty 
Mudkip would actually X speed on this love disc here, which is interesting, right? You have more speed, you're using an X speed? What do you mean? Well, it actually allows you to outspeed love disc and seeking on this fight. Um, so you get two turns of being faster than something for one turn of X speeding. So that becomes worth it. And then you get to skip X speed on Drake instead, because you're already faster than everything without the X speed in that case. So you don't have to worry about like buying different numbers of X speed since it's one for the other. Um, and that's how the hasty saves time on uh, in two occasions and why I would have preferred to hit that one because I didn't think this could like realistically record without the hasty. Um, even though in almost every case, you'd rather have the mild. And yeah, the Love Disc has Water Pulse and Sweet Kiss. The Sea King hits you with Water Pulse. The Melodic is a two-shot and hits you with Water Pulse. So that's why the Persian Berry is the best strategy for this fight. It's just so likely to get confused and so bad if it happens. Especially because Sweet Kiss is likely from Love Disc. Um, wait. He didn't crit melodic, but you know, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> um, critting this melodic obviously is a way to save time. I think this is, I believe this is the only thing that you can crit with Kyogre and save time, like period. And that's kind of, you know, why these 12 seconds are so hard to make up. It, there's just low variance overall. Kyogre's really good. It's not like, no, you know, there's no variance, but compared to a similar number of stretch of fights with, uh, you know, with Swampert, Mudkip, Marsh Stomp, overall, less. Do the little bonk trick there off the wall. Save the turn frame. Take the Persian Berry off Kyogre. Do a terrible fly menu. Or like, you know, moving the fly cursor to the right part of the city. Repel and give the Mystic Water. Not to Wingle. Very easy to give the Mystic Water to Wingle there. That would have, uh, I mean, that's just fucked. I'd take it off and then put it on again. the waterfall by one tile. We were like, did he uh did he confidently and perfectly bike that? No way, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. It's not that hard, but it's hard enough. To be clear, I don't either here. I think I messed up the last part. One tile off, man. If I had gone one tile higher, I would've wouldn't have bonked the right wall. That's right. Victory Road is very, very, very difficult to do perfectly. Like, I don't I don't think I've in fact I can confidently say I've never seen anyone do a perfect victory road. Like, yeah, there you go. Mistake from way where there. It's just it's it's just not reasonable at all on the mock bike to actually do it perfectly. Like that little section he did right there is hard as shit. I think I get it though too. No, I'm just kidding. I bonked. <laughs> Ugh. He gets the walk in front of the trainer perfectly though. Doom, 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 doom. Yep. I don't know why the noise is, but you know. 
even just something like walking right in front of that trainer so she doesn't walk up a tile to you is uh, difficult. Now, Wave Warrior is going to do the hardest part, in my opinion. There's so many like one-liners here. Got to get on. But... Oh, oh, he was so close. That's a, that's closer than I've ever been to doing that part perfectly. Okay. We're freaking out. Wave Warrior is freaking out. <laughs> Why did he take steps after? This is a this is a I'm freaking out moment. He, uh, he took. I don't know, man. It was the adrenaline rush from almost getting that bridge perfectly. He had his brain all fucked up. He actually takes steps naked here with no repel. He's like, you know what? I should probably repel. Notice that's the the exact number of repels. And you see bonk. And then I go too high in the bridge. And then I bonk again. And then I do not take extra steps with my repel. Um, yeah, that part is just brutally hard. Um, no variants in these fights except, uh, this Nine Tails can quick attack. Which, wow, Wave Warrior gets. How much time is that? <laughs> like three seconds, right? Yeah, I mean, something like, you know, just keep that in mind. Goodness. He's also taken a lot more damage than me, which is relevant. We're going to make up 14 seconds <laughs> from this point, just to die. That's, it's just, it's just not reasonable. Maybe I'm pranking you guys. Maybe this is actually just a really good run that dies. Holy shit, Wave Warrior. <laughs> I don't know if the, it's probably, it's, pro it's probably a combination of the fact that, um, that this is a really, I mean, you know, this was two years ago, so getting getting a 156. He had been grinding this game forever. I don't know how practiced he was on Victory Road, but uh, <laughs> he tries to he tries to do the right thing there, which is get off the bike, but winds up walking a bit, and and then I do some weird deceleration shit. I don't talk to the rock smash follower. We're shitting the bet. We're shitting the bet. Victory Road is really hard, and it's not fun to practice at all. But he did that part smooth. I was I told myself right here, I was like, if you do this part perfectly, then you can be happy with yourself. You can be happy with this Victory Road. And we shit the bed. <laughs> oh. Fuck Victory Road. Um, yeah, Cacturn, Wally, nothing can, uh, nothing can occur that ruins things. And by ruins things, I mean, is press the buttons fast and you can't lose time. No quick attacks, no damage ranges. No, well, not with the mild anyway. The, uh, the guard of war can be a damage range if you have the other Kyogre's. I believe it's only as bad as 13 and 16, even with the hasty, but yeah, use the right move. Fight. So it's at this point, probably right about now, thinking to myself, all right. You Yola the Zatu. You somehow salvaged your almost untenable surf situation. But how am I going to save 14 seconds on record when nothing particularly bad happens in his run? I mean, we'll see it for ourselves here. But nothing, you know, nothing to save significant time on happens in his run. So how? How are we going to do it?
We mess up the ending? Oh man, I can't forgive myself for that one. We mess <laughs> I bonk that stupid tile, that's ridiculous. Uh, we deposit everything here because each separate Pokemon has a cutscene in the Hall of Fame, so it's actually faster to deposit them. So, Sydney fight. With the mild Kyogre... Oh. No damage ranges, but uh, other Kyogres can have a damage range on Sharpedo. But there are two things in this fight that can occur that uh, can save her loose time. The Absol can use Snatch, which has priority, so you lose time. And the Shiftry can Fake Out, which actually seems somewhat likely to do. Um, not sure how your... HP affects that if it has status moves it wants to use instead. If you're like high, you're less likely to get fake out or something. Um, but yeah, fake out uh, loses significant enough time. I mean, it's a tight battle. I mean, we're you know we're one Pokemon behind. Excuse me. No, but we do get the snatch. Something like three, four seconds. But Wave Warrior gets the fake out, which is worse. Rainfall taxed. Damage. He's taken a lot of damage, actually. Like, pretty hard to take more damage than that. I guess uh, double confuse. We crit the shift tree. That, I believe, is the only critical we get. Each critical loses about 1.5 seconds. So, we make up four there. And now it's Phoebe time. Phoebe is... Nothing can go wrong, except... <laughs> Uh, the the final Dusclops is a little too beefy um, to take down in one hit, and uh, it has Citrus Berry, plus if you hit it low enough, it can heal as well, I think. So you have to Shockwave it first to set up the Surf to kill, and when you do that, it can do one of two things. It can Shadow Ball. Um, which is probably going to happen in Wave Warrior's case because he is under half HP. And in my case, I'm very likely to get Confuse Ray because I'm very high HP. I'm actually rooting for Confuse Ray at this point because, like I said, how am I going to save <laughs> 14 seconds? Um, and... The answer is I'm going to try to do a heal us elite for, which is very difficult to get. You need a pretty specific set of circumstances. Way where he gets Shadow Ball. That's what, that's what he wanted to see there, because he's going to have to heal. We get Confuse Ray, and if you remember, this is the second time that we've been in this situation where I have to hit through Confusion here, or I will not world record. And this time, I'm absolutely positive of it. <laughs> but we hit through, and somehow we've only taken... 32 damage so far. So, one thinks to oneself, maybe there's a chance. And it is at this point that I am thinking, okay, we need to go heal us here. And you see that uh, how close this is now, right? Because we didn't have to heal there. Now, Generally speaking, even if you don't have to heal before Glacia, you have to heal at some point in, in Elite Four. But that heal is slow. So. Glalie dies. 
because he kills your rain if you try to set up there. And hail starts. You want the Celio to hail instead. And then you need to set up a second next special because it doesn't die to Shockwave. And on this turn, it shall body slam. 30% to paralyze. If that paralyzed, the run's over. And by over, I mean I probably barely PB and don't world record and yeah. So I don't actually know um what the exact numbers behind it are, but what I do know is that this situation is gonna be quite close. As far as, am I going to be able to make it through the Elite Four without healing? So I actually, uh, you would usually set up on the second Glalie here, but I actually opt to set up on the Celio because um, it does quite a bit less damage with Blizzard than Glalie does with Shadow Ball. Wave Warrior crits. Over on his side. I don't know how many times he's crit so far, but I do know how many times he crits total. <laughs> um, so yeah, that blizzard did... What? 20 or something? 21? Yeah, 21. And then let's see how much Shadow Ball does. Shadow Ball does... Was that 34? 106 to, yeah, 34. So we saved 13 health. Right? I'm just going to assume that that was correct and because I forgot everything already. I've been, I've been talking and focusing on this for so long. I say so long. It's been like two hours, but. And look at this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> look how close it is. Oh my god. This is uh, it's actually really cool seeing it side by side. You know, you you see 1.3 seconds ahead, but like seeing it side by side is crazy. Like, oh my god, this was so close. So, the uh, the hasty Kyogre would get to skip X speed here, and assuming it hit all its little 13 and 14 damage ranges that are scattered all over the place, um, you'd be able to yeah, just skip the X speed here. But we need to X speed, and here's the problem with that: is that this Altaria can either Dragon Dance or Take Down. And if I get Take Down from Altaria, I won't die, but I will be at an HP where I'm forced to heal for champion because I'll be 100% to die if I don't. And that will result in not world record. <laughs> so I am rooting quite hard for Dragon Dance here. Um, you saw it speed it because you're X speeding on this turn. And uh, so, th so that we can get record. Wave Warrior gets Dragon Dance. And we get the takedown miss. Now, if you remember earlier in the run, I told you guys about this stat up animation right here. Look at this. <laughs> and that allows us to take the lead. Take down miss. I mean, it's like three or more seconds faster than Dragon Dance there. And I popped off. Go watch this part in the video, in the uh, in the live video if you haven't seen it. Because uh, I, I was hyped. Because <laughs> I knew that that was going to that was going to allow me to take the lead for sure. Um, oh, yeah. Small bonus. The. The. Uh, the mild Kyogre only can surf these Flygons to save the super effective techs of Ice Beam. The other Kyogres have a damage range that's generally not worth going for unless you need the time save. 
I would have uh, I would have had to go for that with the um, with the hasty if I had hit it, most likely. So we've somehow made it to this point. And there is only one thing that can stop us now. And that is getting crit by Skarmory, which kills any run. Um, but even on a run that was, you know, significantly ahead, you're, you, you wouldn't want to heal here because then you can get toxic and that's really slow. You can also just get spikes here, even from uh, either of our HPs. Which I am a little worried about at the point, because spikes, spikes is faster than getting hit. But uh, we get hit, we hold our breath, and it's now that I'm pretty sure that it's over, because I have six surfs here. Uh, depending on what happens, which cargo you have, etc. You can have less surfs, which forces you to like go over to Waterfall and then come back to surf. To finish out the fight, because some things only die to surf, some things die to both. Like Cradley and Metagross need surf to die. Waver also had six surfs, though. Wait, did he? Did he? No, he actually wound up getting spikes. Maybe. S I don't know. Maybe spikes is actually not that fast. I don't know. And I definitely don't feel like sitting here and timing it. But, uh... But yeah, he also had uh, Surf Spam for this fight as well. I was assuming that it was, uh... That we had both gotten hit, but... It's the first time I'm watching it. And look how close. Like, we're both... The, the, the Cradle East HP bar is going down on both... <laughs> on both screens it's crazy that takedown mess was uh was nuts definitely like a never give up counter run man I've definitely thought this was over quite a few times but I never actually gave up And, uh, yeah, after that first turn with Skarmory, uh, the fight's just over. You just surf six times, nothing can happen. Boom. And, yeah. It's at this point that I'm... I know we've done it, and uh, there's some difference between how quickly um, different Sapphire carts save, I believe... Wave Warriors saves like 0.24 seconds faster than mine or something, and there's four saves in the run. But um, even with like the biggest difference in save carts and bad mashing and whatever, or let's not say bad mashing, but like not amazing mashing. That being said, you can see I'm mashing my dick off on the uh, input viewer there. <laughs> That's a lot of mashing. My poor hands. Uh, but even with the worst case scenario of all that, I'm pretty sure I have it here. It's so close, though. And uh, this was retimed to be a 47. But uh, Wave Warrior pointed out to me before I did this commentary, I didn't actually like look at both screens and count them, but I only crit once in the Elite Four. And uh, Wave Warrior said that he crit four times. If I crit three times, this was 
not world record. If I crit one time, one additional time, then it would have still been record barely by like 0.1 seconds if i had crit one additional time if i crit two additional times uh it just wasn't record because each crit is like 1.4 1.5 seconds so um in the in the world record vod at some point wave warrior says it's going to come down to crits and uh and it did come down to crits a what is because this th this was actually a 47 i split slightly late a three second world record crazy run uh obviously could have been something crazy if we didn't lose a minute to winona but um i'm proud of myself for not giving up sticking it through to the end uh playing to my outs and making good decisions like uh in a situation that i was unfamiliar with which was actually trying to salvage a run that had no surfs after Winona or low surfs I should say but anyway this was my commentary of the new Pokemon Sapphire world record I hope that you enjoyed it um please if you made it this far first of all thank you for uh I know a lot of people look forward to these commentary videos but if you're here listening to this part thank you in particular yes you um, and if you would leave me a comment in the section telling me how you liked this style of commentary in particular, um, specifically the aspect of the side-by-side -side comparison and also, um, the offline commentary, uh, you know, I'm just doing this in my room. I'm not, I'm not live on Twitch. Like I normally am when I do these commentaries, which parts of this did you like, which parts of this didn't you like? um etc and uh i'd be really interested to hear i uh i personally liked this i enjoyed doing this i i liked focusing and um you know just talking about the run um unsure how i feel about the comparison i liked having it there at times but it was um, also kind of like a lot slash overwhelming, um, to try to talk about everything. I mean, obviously I wasn't trying to talk about absolutely everything that was happening in both runs. I was more focusing on mine, but still it was overwhelming at times. Um, you know, the stopping and the starting and the pausing to explain things in more detail and the pointing to HP bars. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Um, I really appreciate you guys and I will see you for the next one. Coming soon, TM.